going to take a trip down memory lane and look at NASCAR's greatest finishes in history. You can think of any race, it will probably be here that had a fantastic finish. NASCAR is known for the greatest finishes that it has. Uh, you could think of many probably off the top of your head that will be in this video, but today we are going to start off with one that is very, very memorable. And by the way, in this video, this list is in no particular order in terms of, you know, what's the best of, of all of them. This is gonna be going uh, basically by random. So here we go. We are at Talladega 2011, the tandem drafting. Carl Edwards, Greg Biffle as a team, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin coming together as a team. Gordon was the pole sitter for this race. Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick as a team, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. as a team. And those are the four guys that will end up racing it out for the win. Coming to the white flag, Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin took over the lead but it was just about who can get the best run at the best time and would they be able to hang on or would Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick with the run that they get through one and two be able to come fourth or would Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. be able to come through and would any second place car in the tandem draft try to win the race for themselves? Enjoy the finish. To the outside, stay together. That's what they're saying, stay together. Push, push, push. Oh, get tight down here in turn three. Don't forget Jimmy Johnson and Dale Jr., fifth and sixth. They are there. Which group will they go with? And will it help the Childress cars? Or will it help Jeff Gordon to victory lane? All bets are off. They get to the middle of the travel. Watch out down low. Way Good down run. comes Johnson. Good run. Boy. He's got room. They're three wide. Three by three run. to the line. Johnson. Maybe Jimmy Johnson. I believe he got him by an inch. Two one thousandths of a second. He Two, four, six, eight. As good old DW said, Daryl Walchip. Two one thousandths of a second. Jimmy Johnson would take home the win at Talladega. That was one heck of a finish. We're probably never going to see again. We now move on to 2005 in what was one of the craziest races in NASCAR history. The 2005 Coca-Cola 600. A record amount of cautions for Charlotte Motor Speedway. The track just had a repaving, a repaving and a reconfiguration. And the drivers, there just was no grip on the racetrack. So many cautions during this race. But it is the end of the race that many people will remember. It was Bobby Labonte in the 18 FedEx against Jimmy Johnson in the 48 Lowe's Chevrolet. And let's see what they can do coming through the white flag lap. Side by side on can't, turn two. Bobby's on the half side. You though. can't pass over there. There's no way. What's Clear. that? One it, last charge right here, man. It's all over, boys. What's that? The last best here move comes. made outside. too soon. Here he comes. Outside. Outside. Just like in Atlanta last March. Now he's not going to be able to do it, I don't think. They're side yes, by he side. Is. Here, here, he here he comes. Jimmy Johnson. Got it. 48 car. He did it. Three in a row. Jimmy Johnson. By two of a second. I thought when he got beat off a of turn two, it was all over, but he drove it in on the outside. And hey, look, another race involving Jimmy Johnson. We move on to something that was much more recent, the first ever race at the Charlotte Roval 2018. Martin Truex Jr. versus Jimmy Johnson. Now, this is not the same Jimmy Johnson that we've been seeing in the past. He's been through a slump and not really winning many races, so this could have been his first win in a few years, actually. And on a brand new road course, it was only fitting that we would get a beautiful, not side-by-side -side finish, but one of the craziest finish finishes in NASCAR history. Something that this road course or slash roval uh, was promising to happen. Truex versus Johnson on the white flag lap, going for the win in the playoffs at the Charlotte Roval. To the oval, say to Denny Hamlin and Tony Stewart at Sonoma a couple of years ago, Jimmy Johnson trying to narrow that gap. Two car lengths as they go to the bottom of the racetrack in the middle of the bank and turns nine and ten off ten. One car length lane for Martin Truex. Truex down the back stretch now. He'll have to face the turn to the left. He'll get it done. Johnson now right on his tail. They both accelerate up into turn 13. Jimmy Johnson now pulls to the bumper. He's going to try to make a move on Truex. He's only a half a car lead back. Jimmy Johnson looks to the inside of Martin Truex Jr. They dive into the chicane. They touch. Jimmy Johnson spins. Martin Truex Jr. gets hit by Johnson. They are both spun out. Here comes Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney will survive and win the Bank of America Roval 400. What a finish. From the Roval, we go to 2012 and Watkins Glen. Add some oil onto the racetrack and this is what you get. One of the craziest, probably my favorite finish of all time 
in NASCAR history, mainly because of how chaotic it was. Kyle Busch goes for a spin after running in some oil and going off the front bumper of Brad Keselowski, but then it would be Marcos Ambrose, the road course specialist, versus Brad Keselowski for the race win. Kozlowski's got a problem. Trying to stay with Ambrose. Two final corners. Do they use the bumpers? A nudge, a push. Can Ambrose save it? To the checkered flag. Who gets here first? Clear, clear. Ambrose, nine. Kozlowski, two. Final corner. Marcus Ambrose is going to win at Watkins Glen in a remarkable last lap turn of events. The 2007 Daytona 500, probably the most memorable Daytona 500. Kevin Harvick running sixth on the final lap on the outside lane. Mark Marin going for his first Daytona 500 win, the fan favorite Mark Marin. Kyle Busch, a young Kyle Busch running in second trying to find his way around. But Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick on the outside lane would get one heck of a run down the back straightaway. Mark Marin having to try to block it while also trying to block Kyle Busch. Kevin Harvick will get to the outside of Kyle Busch and then get the run to get to the outside of Mark Martin and then the rest was history. Oh, Mark got loose. Mark got loose. Harvick's getting the run off turn four. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start finish line. No caution. They're side by side. Right to the line. Dog crash. Here they come. Check the flag. Jeff Gordon's wrecked. And they Montoya. are still wrecking. Montoya, Stremme, Kenseth, Biffle, Marlin, Carl Edwards, Casey Mears all crashed on the final. Might have lied earlier when I said that road course in 2012 was my favorite finish. This probably might be my favorite finish. It's probably the most famous finish. Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski with Newman and Dale Earnhardt Jr. chasing. From Larry Mack's meme of a, of a phrase that he says at the end, to Dale Waltrip constantly saying no at the end of this race, to the finish itself, there's so much in this finish that I just absolutely love. The tandem racing again in 2009, but Brad Keselowski, an up-and-comer no one really knew about in the 09 car against Carl Edwards, one of the best drivers in NASCAR at the time, had a dominant season in 2008 without winning the championship, coming to the finish, and I think you guys know what happens right here at the line. Can Kozlowski try to win it? I don't know. I don't think he can step out until he waits till the last second and picks he up. He goes to the outside. Is Edwards going to oh, lose? No. He turns it. No. No. Oh, and that no. destroyed the front end of Newman's car. No. Edwards will not make it to the flag. Oh, Brad no. Keselowski won this race. Unbelievable. Carl Edwards' car destroyed and Junior's protege Keselowski, the winner, and Carl Edwards is moving around and ready to climb out. Not sure where Carl's going. Maybe he thinks if he runs across the start-finish line, it'll count. That's what he's. Got, that's what he's doing. He's that's gonna, what he's doing. He's like a mar You know how he is. He's an athlete, a marathon runner. I want to finish the race. And he did yes, to he a did. standing ovation from the crowd. Shades of Ricky Bobby. 2001 was a hard year for everyone in the United States of America, but also NASCAR with the passing of Dale Earnhardt in the 2001 Daytona 500. Exactly three races later, uh, we had the finish at Atlanta where the guy that replaced Dale Earnhardt, Kevin Harvick, went in that 29 Goodwrench white Chevy, still one of my favorite paint schemes of all time, against the legend himself, Jeff Gordon, that would go on to win the championship that year. Gordon hunting down the rookie. Harvick was going for his first NASCAR Cup Series win. Gordon had a pretty good run, ran him down for, from a few tenths of a second back, heading into the final corner, would go low, and then the slow car would be in the way, but we would get an amazing finish. Slow car, slow car, slow car is going to be in the way. Just That's like a year ago, he's going to get him, though. Here he's going to get him. Gordon got loose, it's Harvick. Harvick by inches. Harvick by inches. Harvick by inches. 
What a race! Ah, you can have your favorite finishes, but this is arguably the greatest finish of all time. 2003 Darlington. Kurt Busch has no power steering side by side. Nobody gives entering turn one a corner where you really should not be going side by side. Craven puts Bush into the wall. Bush is like, I bet, gets to the rear end of Craven, gets them loose, gets right back around. But Craven would not take no for an answer. And especially with Kurt Busch really lacking that power steering, Craven obviously has the better car as he gets a beautiful run through three and four coming to the white flag lap but this time craven is smart and he's like i'm not gonna make the move in one and two and that would set up one of the greatest probably the greatest i don't think it, it might never be topped the greatest finish in nascar history ricky craven versus kurt bush now nah, they're driving good come on baby you can do it on this end of the speedway come off the court and get up alongside of him half a mile here he comes here Next race we go to is Tony Stewart's final win. Now this race is not on a lot of people's list as NASCAR's greatest finishes, but it's on mine because it's Tony Stewart's final win and him versus Hamlin. He was leading on the final lap. Hamlin gives him a little bit of a bump and nudge and get out of my way. And then you got to get back on the power through the S's at Sonoma. Stewart's like, ah, oh, man, no, 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 that's not going to happen again. If Stewart can get to the back bumper of Hamlin, you know, you know for a fact something's going to happen. But can Denny Hamlin pull away and keep Tony Stewart from winning his final race and as he pulls away through the s's you think there's no real way that tony stewart's going to be able to gain up all that ground i mean he's three four tenths of a second back here but denny hamlin he bottles it he chokes and wheel spins or wheel hops into the final uh, corner tony stewart budges him out of the way with no regard for human life and he comes to the star finish line and tony stewart will win his final race at Sonoma. Now this next race is not an official points race, it's actually the 2016 All-Star Open. Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson going at it to try to get to the All-Star race, but this was one heck of a battle. The way he got this quarter panel, he'll probably have it cleared. Close. No, he doesn't. Look Larson at oh, tried to he got him down. The he sucked him around. <laughs> he sucked him Two around. Two to go. Larson pinned Woo. him down to the bottom of the racetrack and Chase all just went around. Can he get Elliot. beside him and can he make clear it? Don't go to the inside. Go to the outside. There it is. He's going to get him right here. I think he's it got is. Him. It's going to be a drag race to the line. Oh, he's got him. I think he might have him. He's got the momentum. Don't wreck. Don't wreck. They touch. They touch. They're sliding. Oh, They're wow. breaking. Larson wow. got him. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Got him. <laughs> that was amazing. The 2016 Daytona 500, not talked about a lot in the greatest finishes, but this is one heck of a finish. And it has a lot of similarities to the 2007 Daytona 500. So you see Kevin Harvick is in the outside lane, same spot coming in the white flag lap. He's, but here comes Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin slides up. He remembers, he saw what happened in 2007, and now Harvick, who's not leading the line, has to push Hamlin and try to get, they have to try to get the run. Matt Kenseth is in the Mark Martin position in 2007, leading the race. Martin Truex Jr. is in the young Kyle Busch position in second place, but here comes the push. Denny Hamlin is trying to get to him, and Kenseth sees this. Kenseth goes to block, but this time he doesn't do a good enough job. Denny Hamlin goes to the inside, makes a three wide. Kenseth makes an amazing save, and then it's side by side to the line. Goodness. 2006 Las Vegas Matt Kenseth Jimmy Johnson Kyle Busch right behind them trying to run him down I think this was the last race where Las Vegas was then reconfigured into what the Las Vegas we have now but this was one heck of a finish here on the flat Las Vegas Motor Speedway with Jimmy trying to get to Matt Kenseth trying to pass him on the white flag lap Kenseth pulls the block going off into turn three Johnson goes to the high side he's he going to try to get that momentum Jimmy Johnson drag race. Won one last year like drag this race. Kenseth with the He's edge, here comes Johnson, Jimmy's momentum got it. He's outside. Got it. He's got it. He's got Johnson. it. Johnson, 48, yeah. wins the UAW Daimler Chrysler Woo. 400. He led one lap. He got 2018 Chicago Land. Add a bunch of lap cars. Add the talent that is Kyle Larson with Kyle Busch leading. And you get probably the best finish of 2018 and one of the best finishes in recent memory. 
with Kyle Busch leading, Larson trying to chase him down, and with only a few laps to go, Larson would be able to do that when with two to go through three and four, he goes to the high side and he gets one heck of a run. From Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s very, very famous phrase now to the actions that happen on the racetrack, this is one heck of a finish. Bush, and here comes Larson. Larson to the bottom of the track. Bad job. Trying to take the lead away. Bad job. Almost. The momentum. The contact. 18. They make contact. The 18 in the wall. Contact. Contact. They're side contact. by side again. Going into three for the lead. Larson has the advantage. Here comes the 18. He puts the oh ball in the back goodness. of him. The 18 into the wall. Yeah, the 42 yeah, sideways. There's Harvick. Here comes the 18. Kyle Busch will win. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. And we will end it in 2005. The Atlanta finish between Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards. Carl, I miss you. I think a lot of us miss you. But this is one heck of a finish. Another Atlanta photo finish. There's so many of them throughout the history uh, at this racetrack. One of the best racetracks in NASCAR. Carl goes to the high side in one and two. It doesn't work. Jimmy would then try to block in three and four and take away his line. But Carl was able to squeeze his car up there. And then they come side by side to the line. Even if I try, my love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm. 